Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden. And today we're in the backyard and we're on the side area in the new shade garden. While it doesn't look much of anything at this point, I've actually done a few different things and we're gonna do a few more things today. So what I actually did a day ago, and I didn't film it, I apologize, we actually cleared out the entire space and I went through with my weed eater and I took the grass down really, really low to allow a lot of it to just sit and bake under the um, hot weather, hi Buffy, <laughs> under the hot weather for a few days to kill off a lot of the grass and um, I think that was really helpful. Okay, so today what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be capping each of the sprinkler heads on this side of the garden and then we are also going to be laying landscape fabric across um, in addition i'm going to be laying stepping stones down the center and then finally i hope to go ahead and fill it with either gravel or mulch okay if you missed the first video on the shade garden i'll drop that link below but let's just do a quick recap of what we have going in here so in this area right here we're going to be having a potting bench an area where I can store tools beautiful pots do some potting if I want I think that'll be great on this side we're going to be installing one of those Vigo metal gardens that is about 30 32 inches tall so it's a taller garden uh, that's going to be going across here and then towards the front of the garden we're going to be creating some kind of really interesting entrance at this point I'm leading towards potentially purchasing just some old um, antique or vintage doors uh, that are nice and weathered and creating some kind of beautiful arch that I can have climbing roses on or something along those lines. Finally, um, one thing I am going to be doing is this particular garden gets light right about now till noon. So it gets about two hours of light during the day. And so I'm thinking about installing some shade cloth as well or some kind of beautiful sail, something along those lines, just so that these beautiful shade-like plants aren't going to get just burned by the sun, especially at this time of the year where we're experiencing triple digit uh, temperatures every single day. Okay. Okay, over here we're going to change out a sprinkler head and basically the goal is I don't want water to come out of this anymore. But I don't want to permanently change this because who knows, I might make mess a uh, change of mind in the future. So a lot of people would just dig this up and cap it or move it or things like that, but I actually prefer to utilize a um, new little kind of sprinkler head for it. And this is a 360 degree adjustable head and basically you can adjust it to um, be completely closed so it's 0 to 360 so if I put this head in I can adjust it to be completely closed and no water will come out of it but in the future should I ever choose to utilize the sprinkler again I can adjust it to open back up to whatever it is I need now there are some fancy tools to do all of this but basically you want to pull this portion off and you up and you want to hold on to it don't let go screw this part off just like that oh i forgot my little guy but that's fine we reuse that one and then you just screw the next one right back on super easy like that and the increase is that way so we're going to decrease this way so um the increase is turning it to the right clockwise and decrease is going to the left counterclockwise and it actually says here on that that's how I know so make sure the whole thing's on and then adjust my thing there and we'll run a test on this later to make sure that that worked correctly Okay, here's the capping system that I'm using by Rainbird. I purchased these from Lowe's and it's called an adjustable nozzle. And this is what we're looking for, the zero to 360 degrees. So you can shut it all the way off. Works great. So, okay, and getting the last one done. Pull all the way up. Unscrew it while you're holding it up. 
and then put the new one on and then come up just to right under the yellow part and twist all the way to the left. We actually have some wind today so the garden has some movement instead of just being deathly hot. <laughs> it looks pretty from this angle. This is the view from the shade garden looking out onto the rest of the garden. I love it. I think the shade garden is just going to be this beautiful little retreat for me to tuck into especially on hot days and be able to be outside without it being dangerous to my health is basically where we're at on that. I love this view. Okay, the next thing I need to do is start installing a partial, um, a partial uh, metal edge along this area to separate the grass from where I'm going to have the ground, the covering in the shade area. I would love if I got to a point where I had no grass in my garden. Not a fan. Um, so I'm just going to be installing one of those basic metal edges. And I found that over the years it's way easier to just go to head with the shovel and go across. Now I'm not going to be completing this edge all the way across because I'm not really sure where I want it to curve. So I'm just going to start a partial edge. I'm using small pieces that are actually used for tree rings um, as well. And they're just little four inch pieces. Okay, I'm being done. I'm gonna go put on tennis shoes and come back. Okay, so basically I have these metal pieces. I guess they're probably four foot long. And the idea is to come in here in the area where I've already kind of pre-dug it out. And you use the mallet. I prefer to use a rubber mallet. And start working along the edge, hammering this down into the soil. Now, this is harder right now because of um, the soil is so dry. So that kind of creates a little bit of an issue. Once you kind of have it hammered down into place, I'm going to do it a little bit further. There we go. Once you have it down in place, it comes with these metal spikes. and you just put this metal spikes. There's like places for the metal spikes to hook in. You just put them down there. Now, over here, it doesn't give it a really good coverage of where the um, grass is. So I will go back once I've got all this installed and I will add a grass killer right here for probably about the four inches on either side of it, just to kind of help out a little bit. Um, we are going to end up cutting up, uh, cutting back a lot of this grass and then covering it up. But it'll be easier if I do just a little bit of grass killer right there. And then anytime I see grass popping up along this board or anywhere in the area, I'll probably hit it with a touch of grass killer. Now, some of y'all are probably asking, why am I not spraying grass killer throughout this entire space? Well, I can't guarantee that someday I might not want to plant into this soil directly into the ground in the shade garden. So I don't want to put a ton of grass killer and then not be able to use the space for several years. And so I prefer to do it this way and I'll just spot treat as needed. So then they fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. So I'll come through with the next one. And I'll go ahead to make sure I have it lined up right. I'll go ahead and add my stakes to kind of hold it in place a little bit. Get my other stake. I'm 
we'll get this a little bit of a tap into the soil. You don't want to put these all the way down until you have your metal edging secured in place. And I've installed this metal edging in a lot of gardens over the years. I don't think it's a simple install, um, but it works for me. It's inexpensive, so that's great. <laughs> and then another little trick if it's not going down into the soil as much as you like just come in here with your hose and run some water to moisten the ground right along the edge this ground is so dry <gasps> And this will help you get the edging. And then just come back through with your stakes. Now I'm not putting these stakes all the way down at this very end part right here and I'm actually going to put a safety flag right there because this metal is very sharp. Um, I'm not putting it all the way down there because I still going to do another piece to finish off. I just haven't decided if I'm going to turn a hard corner or if I'm going to go just soft to the edge yet. And I really can't tell until I move this other stuff and I can't move this other stuff until I put in the Vigo bed. Okay, and I'm just putting a red flag right here so that I know and that I don't step there. Okay, I install, installed this front edge and I also installed an edge back here because the gate comes up a couple of inches and I want to keep the um, mulch from flowing out. So my next big step is to begin installing um, landscape fabric. And I'm using commercial grade landscape fabric. And basically what I like to do is I'm going to layer everything. I'm going to overlay them by a couple of inches. So I've got my landscape fabric and I've got a whole bunch of landscape stakes, a whole bunch of landscape stakes. So, and of course, like it, guys, we haven't had wind in weeks. And of course, the day I decide to install is the day we're going to have wind. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come past this edge um, over here. Let me move to the side so you can see. So right here's the barrier. I'm going to come way past that edge. I'm not going to stop right at that barrier. And I like to do that on all my landscape fab um, fabric is I like to come far over the edge and then fold that area back over. So we'll start by putting that in, this area in first, and then I like to walk back over it, straightening as I go, and installing the landscape pins. And I'm going to put quite a few, and you push them in with your feet. And you're definitely going to need a good pair of scissors to cut. And remember, we want excess. That.
Now, I think there's a lot of confusion regarding landscape fabric. This landscape fabric allows water to flow through it. Will it block out 100% of weeds and grass? No. Not unless you get some of that kind that allows no light, no water through. And then even then, <laughs> I feel like Bermuda grass always finds a way. <laughs> okay, we're going to start another layer making sure we overlap just like that and I'm gonna have to be smart with this layer because I'm gonna run into different areas and I don't want my landscape fabric to perfectly match up against the side of the foundation I'm gonna have excess that I can fold over in like a double and triple fold that's thicker to prevent more um, weeds or grass from coming through. Okay, so it's the next day and I'm inside right now because of course it's like 105 degrees outside. And I am starting to build my Vigo garden. Now this particular Vigo garden is called Extra Tall 9-in-1 Modular. And when they say 9-in-1 Modular, that means there's nine different configurations for this particular garden whether you want it wider, taller, longer, thinner, whatever. Um, there's a lot of different ways to go about it and pretty much all their products are like that. They're modular and they go in a bunch of different configurations. So um, they contacted me last October and asked if I'd be interested in trying out one of their gardens for free. And I'm not gonna turn that down because they have really good products and I would love to try one of their gardens. So I'll go ahead and put up the link um, to this so that you can see what it is and then let me go ahead and pull all this stuff out and then let's talk about uh, putting it together. Okay, so the color I ordered is called Olive Green. I feel like it's more of a sage green, um, but that's of course my opinion. One thing about all of these kind of metal corrugated um, gardens is they have this plastic film across the top of all of them. So you do have to pull the film off, which I find strangely therapeutic if it's easy to get the edges of it. So Okay, so let's talk about what all it came with. So it came with these long panels and there's eight of these. And then there's four of the curved ones right there. And then over here, it came with, th this is a uh, safety edging for the edging so you don't cut yourself. Um, although I think the top is fine. It doesn't feel really sharp. This is all of its bolts and such. And it looks like it has the giant key or the Allen wrench to work some 3M stretch strips, I'm not sure what they're for, the instructions, and two sets of rods, depending on what height you end up doing. Okay, well, I wouldn't call it easy. <laughs> it is definitely a physical workout. So let's see, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 60, 66, 72. 72 that you have to put together. And they want you to hand tighten everything to start off with. 
and then go back and tighten in. I haven't done the tightening yet. On the top two bolts on either uh, at the on the top two bolts at the top, they have like this soft cover. So when you're gardening, you don't reach in and scrape yourself. Whereas they just have a basic bolt on the bottom four. But it all went together really well. This in the end is eight foot long, two feet deep, and 32 inches tall, I believe. Um, I think it's really pretty. I think it's going to look pretty spectacular in the shade garden. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and hand tighten everything. I'm not going to make y'all watch that. And then I'm going to um, see what the next step is. Okay, so I installed the bars. They were super easy as they just screw into the existing screws. And so next is the safety edging, which just kind of fit very carefully like over the um, side. Um, I think this is a pretty strong product, so I don't really feel like the safety edging is absolutely necessary. Um, but I think it can probably help with like dents um, if you have, you know, you're using a tool or something. All right, let's speed this up. And then when you get to the end, you just cut it off the excess. And this like, this edging has like a metal part around it, or like in it. There you go. All right. Okay, now we have to pick it up, okay? You need to be careful not to trip on this edge, okay? Ready? How far are we going to make it up? We're going to go up to the side of the fence over here. Okay? Be careful coming over there and let me know if you need to stop. We're going right up against it. There we go. Yeah. It's good. Love you. Thanks, dude. Okay. <laughs> got this built. Got this out here. And you guys can kind of see, like, the feel of the space. So, I'm not going to... I'm probably going to, at some point, before I fill this up and before I find its final position, I'm going to bring in the workbench to put it into place first. Because it comes out a little ways there, too, right? So, my path is going to get a little bit smaller here. So... Maybe it's to my benefit to move this closer out that way so that these, the bench and this don't line up too much. I still have a lot of space over here, which is awesome. I'm really kind of wanting to do something, perhaps a collection of um, Japanese maples back here, I think would be so pretty. And maybe having them on staggered heights, like have one like on a pedestal up high a little bit and some lower but i really like the look and the feel of this garden um this garden is going to be filled with mostly perennials um is my goal shade perennial is going to be in here and there's lots of space for it i'm not going to fill it in today's video i'm going to fill that in a different video and i think i'm going to do the stepping stones in a different video too because it's hot and this video is already getting really long. So what I think probably the next thing is probably going to be is probably filling this guy up and that'll be a whole process in and of itself. Then um, go ahead and laying out the uh, stepping stones all the way across. And I think I'm going to have a combination like stepping stones are going to be a combination of those paw stepping stones and potentially some other ones. And then filling the space with mulch. I think that's what's going to be the next video. The following video is probably going to be the workbench. And then after that, we're kind of out of a point where we'll start um, adding in plants, accessories and stuff. Actually, it's probably not too many plants. We're going to wait till it's cooler. But we'll start adding in a lot of the accessories and existing plants that I already have.
All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up. And make sure you check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.